Thank you. What's your name? Sachin. 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 Thank you, Sachin, Prabhu, for bringing Prabhu from Cincinnati. So Prabhu will be here uh, two days. He'll be doing program today and in the evening, home program, and tomorrow's evening, home program. So we'll give the details later, but I just want to introduce Prabhu. Prabhu doesn't need introduction, a few of us. However, a couple of few people. Pranav Prabhu is very, very senior. It's almost five decades. So he came in contact with this con 1974. So just before Prabhupada left. And then he was an RSS guy. RSS, I should not use the word guy, RSS person. Meaning, um, he wanted to do something for humanity. He, he was telling the stories initially, how he used to sleep on the uh, streets. No one knows where he's there, where, where he'll eat. He was sleeping in the fields, walking for hours and hours. So he has a calling from within, even though he graduate, he left everything. He was working for some time, and after that he's not made a cup of tea. So he was just trying to do the humanitarian work, a lot of things. But eventually, there's something else. This is beyond this, there's something else. Humanitarian work, RS is good for the body level, for the spiritual level. That's where when we met proper disciples, and then we took very serious in 1985. So then he traveled extensively in India, especially Maharashtra. He was a temple president. Whatever the major preachers you see in Iskon now, it was all preached by him. You name it any name. Any, any centers. All came from his direction. He used to spend buckets of buckets of blood. Go in, sometimes buy, sometimes in a bicycle, sometimes a walk, practice. He was telling the stories like, you know, you should write one book for him about him. Amazing journey. Then eventually, based on his guru's instruction, he came to America and he was a vice president of the New and Down community. He was work, uh, serving there for a long time. Then he married actually Mataji from Columbus, in Columbus Temple. Right so, here. Right here. <laughs> Which year was that? Uh, 97. 97. I just missed. Because when I came 99, she moved out. Then he used to visit to Columbus. We were very good friends for a long time. And then he, he's the one actually inspired me. I'll tell you the story. He used to, I, I, um, every time he comes, maybe when are you speaking? I said, no, bro, I don't know how to speak. He heard that many times, one day, let's go for a walk. He put his hand around me, he said, let's go for a walk. You know how to hear? Yes, yes, bro. I hear every day, religiously. Do you know how to read? Yeah, yeah, I also read from class books. If you know how to hear, know how to read, you should, you should know how to speak. I looked at him. <laughs> because no addition, no subtraction, whatever you hear, just. But here, in the mood that he wanted to share, that will stay with you. That stayed with me 27 years. Thank you, Prabhu. I appreciate that. My first class was right here about Narutam Das Thakur, inspired from him. So then later on, he moved back to um, Pune. Now he lives in Pune. He doesn't work. He comes one and a half month or two months to America. He earns a little bit and he goes back and that money he travels and takes devotees to different, different uh, places, pilgrimages. He's, like a living sannyasi, even though he has a wife and child, it's like a sannyasi. He's hot, totally dedicated to Krishna. Amazing inspiration. So he travels, uh, when he's in America, he travels one month with his contemporaries. So we're very fortunate. And he's also an author. He wrote uh, books about um, Bhakti Tukara. He's also available. Do you have some books carried with you? No. Okay. But he's available in um, Amazon. You can uh, we, have, we have a box. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So let's, without any further delay, let's invite him, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, please come. Let's go loudly chanting Hari Bol. I think we can do much better than that. Hari Bol. Yes. Enthusiasm is the key. As Prime Minister Prabhu said, uh, we had a big program last night. The world is relaxing. Eventually, the entire room will be filled. We have that thing to put. Jai 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 
Oh, uh-huh. 
Great pleasure to serve all the devotees from Columbus. I am your servant. Uh, so now you might have already understood I, why I did Ram Bhajan today. <laughs> Rama is appearing, I think, day after tomorrow. So uh, Sri Prabhupada explains Krishna's appearance and his all incarnations. Uh, they are eternal, just like a sun, you know. So uh, they keep on appearing, but uh, the most important thing is when they appear in our heart. So that is a real Ram Nomi or that is a real appearance day of Krishna for us individually. So uh, we have to make sure how the Ram is appearing in our heart. We have to make sure that he will stay there. 
and we have to make sure uh, those who kicked away Ram, they should not stay with us also. So uh, I'll uh, try to just uh, keep the story of Rama and we limit it to only one or two personalities, uh, which are not much spoken about, but they are very important to as a lesson to our life. What we can learn, see, it is not Rama, it's not just a history. It is also happening with us every day. And uh, we learn lessons from Ramayana and all the scriptures like Mahabharata, Ramayana and Bhagavatam. Uh, so that we can uh, learn from the stories or histories and uh, we can apply them in our life and uh, try to see what are the impediments in our life. They are stopping us to go to Ram, uh, who is Krishna. So uh, when Dasharat, uh, he saw one grey hair on his head, you know, that time he decided that I have, this is the time to retire. So when you see one grey hair on your head, you have to understand. <laughs> so that is the time to retire now. now that is the nature, it's said in Bhagavatam. And it's the nature's alert, you know. We get an alert from our federal government, or even Columbus municipality, that there is going to be thunder. So this is the alert of the nature. So what it does is first grey hair. And next one, you start losing your hearing capacity. Then you start losing your seeing capacity, then you start losing your teeth, you know, all 32 gone. Then you start losing your breathing, it becomes heavy. And then you start slowly, slowly all your body, I am a doctor sitting here, I should not say all these things. <laughs> <laughs> you start all these things, you know, all the bones become, uh, you know, decayed and body start decaying. Whatever, so, whatever you are saying is qualified. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> but what if you have no hair from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> but still they will become grow, you know? No, when there are no hair from the beginning, then either you will have black hair in the beginning, you will shave them, and then your white hair, you will shave them. That's it. Their hair is every all your <laughs> So, yeah. You know, you have no hair, at least you have years. You, know? you cannot say, I have no hair. You get a warning there. <laughs> but our Kali Yuga mentality is, uh, you know, we don't care for the nature's call. You know, we don't, care, don't you know, we don't uh, uh, give too much attention to the adult. So what we do if we get grey hairs, we go to Walmart and get some hair dye, right? And we think, oh, I cheated God, you know, I cheated. Then I go to, your ears are gone, then you go to now, there is so many hearing aids, you know, you, don't, you can't see even see them. And when you, you are, Eyes are gone, either you do glass or if you have money, you do surgery. And uh, if you lose your teeth, you, you get better than before, you know, all the 32 days. <laughs> and uh, nowadays, I think uh, you can get all the bones in your body. I think correct probably with uh, knee replacement, hip replacement, everything is replaced, you know, except for the desires in the heart that no one can replace. <laughs> Only you have to replace them. Every, all body can be replaced. Even, even psychologically, you can be changed, intellectually, you can be changed. Only one thing that cannot be changed is your desire. That only you have to change. And that's why Ram is sitting there, to help you to change the desire. But we have to understand who comes between. So there is a So Dasrath, you know, we come back to the point. So Dasrath, he saw and he called Ram. You know, he said, tomorrow, I don't, I don't want to be too late for my spiritual enlightenment. Just tomorrow, we'll do, they decided the day before. And all the ceremony is, uh, you know, all the arrangement of festival and everything is going on. Everybody is happy, you know, all the three queens, you know, uh, Sumitra, Kaushalya, Kai Kai, everybody, including Dasrath, is uh, a minister, Sumantra, everybody is busy. All the Ayodhya Vasis, they are decorating Ayodhya, making all the arrangements because Ram is going to be the king from tomorrow, who is already loved by, as a prince, by all the Ayodhya Vasis. So when all these arrangements are going on, you know, uh, the, there is one character, it's called Mantara. You might have heard her name, Mantara. Now, this Mantara came as an assistant to uh, Kaikai uh, when she married. She, she was from Kaikaya, the same place where Kaikai came to uh, married to Dashrath. So, she was her assistant and uh, kind of an advisor. So, Mantara, she, she thought, you know, if uh, Ram becomes the king, then uh, he will kick out Bharat and uh, he'll, if Bharat is gone, his mother is also gone, his mother is gone, then I am also gone. So better I stop this now only. So she goes to Kaikai uh, uh, and uh, she tells Kaikai that uh, 
do you know what is happening? He said, yes, I know Ram is becoming king tomorrow. It's such a happy thing. Then he said, How, what do you think there is happiness in it? He said, everybody loves him. Then she says, what about Bharat? You know, he said, Bharat dearly loves him. No, he also loves him very much. He will be very happy to see Ram becoming the king. Then in, in the beginning, you know, she starts telling him, then uh, Mantra said, actually, uh, I will tell you what you do not know, what you are not seeing, you know. I have better vision than you. He said, if Ram becomes king, then Bharat has no chance. No chance. And if Bharat has no chance, you will not be treated as a queen. Because you are now Dasarath's king, that is okay. But what about future? So, uh, she starts and he says, no, 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 Ram is so kind, he is so compassionate, he is so loving. He will take care of all the Praja, all the citizens. And of course, we are his brothers. You know, Bharat is his, uh, his brother. They all love dearly each other. So, I have no worry about it. I am so happy. Then Mantara says, you are in delusion. He said, no, no, I don't think like that. You know, so this, when you hear something repeatedly, you start believing it. Mm -hmm. No, that is the mental, uh, that is the things in this material world. You know, you can see if anybody is a student of commerce here or business, you understand all the manufacturing companies, they spend more money in advertising than the product itself. You know, why? Because that is more important. Every day you hear, 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 and everybody starts, in the beginning they ignore. They say, oh, I'm hearing this for the last five years, let us try. And once you trap, you're trapped in it. So that is the advertisement. So same thing. Uh, if you tell lie many times, it becomes a truth, mm -hmm. correct? So that is why we believe this is body, because everybody is thinking this is body and we also believe it. You know? So it is very hard to understand whether or not this body you are soul, because very, pe very few people talk about it. And that doesn't seem to be truth. The people talk body, so that seems to be the truth. So the so truth should be understood from the realized soul and from the scriptures. This mantra, after many times, you know, uh, she convinces Kaikai. Kai. And then Kaikai Kai said, Yeah, actually, you know, you are really intelligent. You have more wisdom than me. I never thought about this thing. You know, Ram will become king and uh, uh, Bharat will never be able to, and we, he will uh, send us to the forest and he will keep us away. He will not treat us properly. So her mind got polluted. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? And then Kaikai Kai said, Yes, that is true, but it is already announced. And uh, Dasarath is already making all the preparation. I, how I can stop him? How I can stop him? There is no way I can step, stop. Then Mantra is saying, you know, many years ago, when Dasarath was, uh, you know, he was bad, he was fighting with all the Asuras on behalf of Indra. You know, he got injured and uh, he was in unconscious and he fell down on the ground. And you are the one who saved him. And after he gained his consciousness, he, because he loved you so much and you have saved his life, he gave you two boons. He asked you at that time, you know, you have saved me, you have, uh, you have taken care of me, and therefore I want to give you two boons, whatever you want. She said, what do I want? You know, I have everything. I am queen and uh, you know, everything is good. I don't need any boon now. So Dasra says, okay, I will give you these boons anytime you want. Uh, anytime you want. Then uh, Kai Kai said, okay, I'll remember that. But she forgot. Mantra remembered it. And Mantra said, uh, said to Kai Kai, he said, Dasrath has given you two boons. And now is the time. No? Use those two boons. So use it. She said, how am I going to use these two boons? He said, first, ask Bharat to be the king, not Ram. And second, Ram should be banished. He should be in sent to exile for 14 years. Then Kai Kai thought, wow, I forgot this thing. And they said, Kai, actually Mantra is the, my dearmost friend. And he she knows only how I can be happy. Even I don't know. And if Mantra was not there, I would not have thought all these things. So it started getting more and more Mantra in her heart. You know, they said, this is the one who is my real well-wisher. And she, she said, now, uh, Kai Kai, uh, Mantra told Kai Kai, please go to Dasarath and ask for these two bones. And then he said, if you don't listen to, he said, you have to be determined. And what you do, he will not listen to you, 
uh, when you go like a queen. Now you go to a room and remove your uh, crown, remove your all queen clothes and uh, lie on the floor with dirty clothes and uh, all. No, so he should understand that you are lamenting, you are angry and you are not happy. So uh, then Dasharath was looking and he was just overseeing all the arrangements going on in Ayodhya, especially in palace. So he comes to, uh, he goes to Kaushalya's palace, Sumitra's palace, and he goes to Kaikai's palace and she is not there. So she is not there. So in the Vedic culture, if you know, if wife is angry, uh, they used to have one room, which is called Kopa Bhavan. That means if wife is angry, she will go to that Kopa Bhavan, that means angry room. You know, there is no other translation for that. <laughs> angry room, you know, where, where, where woman can be angry and husband knows that. You know? So, that is the principle in Vedic culture. Even if you have differences of opinion between husband and wife, you should not fight in front of your kids or in front of the people. Go into one room and do whatever you want. <laughs> so, so, that is why I see Kaikai, she was in that room, in the Kopa Bhavan, anger room. And uh, then Dashra, she said, if she is not in the room, she is not anywhere, they know where to find. So, she came to this Kopa, he came to this Kopa Bhavan. And uh, there, uh, Kaikai was uh, lamenting, she was angry, she was, you know, her heavy breath, she wanted to tell something to Dasharath, and she was lying on the floor in a uh, cloth, dirty clothes. So, uh, Dasharath comes and asks, you know, what happened to you, Kaikai, dear queen? I have, you have everything here, you know, this is, uh, you are the queen of Ayodhya. And uh, why you are lamenting? Then he said, uh, I am lamenting because uh, I am not happy with whatever is going on. You know? He said, what do you want? Such a nice uh, thing is going on. He said, uh, you are coronated, coronating Ram. You are, you know, you are as a king tomorrow. And you didn't consult anybody. You did it on your own. And uh, I want Bharat to be the king. Bharat to be the king. And he said, how that can be? I already announced, he is the older one, you know, Bharat is still young, but he is the older one, he is the right heir of the uh, of king. So he should be uh, coronated as a king. And therefore, uh, Bharat will also not expect this. He will be also happy, so that Ram is king. The so Kaikai said, you know, but I don't want, it is my desire. And then he said, you have given me two bins and I want to use these two bins here. And then he said, this is what I want. I want Bharat to be the king and Ram should be sent to the exile. These are the two things. Now Bharat, Dasharat, hearing this, he fainted and he fell down on the ground. He said, what kind of wicked woman, you know, what kind of uh, desire you have. No, that is not possible. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Krishna. So, Kaikai, she asked this and uh, Dasharath, he fainted and fell on the ground. And then uh, Dasharath said, this is too much, you know, I cannot accept this, you know. Then Kaikai threatens, you know, if you don't do this, I will drink poison, I will kill myself. Then Dasharath says, go to hell, you know, I still I am not going to do it. Then he said, but, you have promised me, you have given me two boons, we have to do this. So now Dasharath is, uh, previously if somebody promises something, they used to fulfill. Huh? Today even if you write it on the paper, they don't fulfill. These are just words, just words, promised. 
that is dharma so uh, it's okay now i am bound to fulfill your desire but that is not my desire it is a, it's forced on me and i guarantee you even bharat will not like it so when mantra was telling kai kai uh, she told him i uh, told her that she because ram or the, this was in the mind of dashrath that he wanted to install ram as a coronated as a king that's why he has sent bharat and shatrughna to their grandfather's house so just 15 days ago before all these things were happening the uh, bharat and shatrughna were not there they went to kekaya to uh, the grandfather's house so mantra was one more point she got is this is the reason they have sent because he, he has to do it in the presence uh, they in the absence of bharat and shatrughna so now this thing is happening now dashrath has to go you know in the morning ram dressed as a prince and he came for beginning ceremony of a rajya abhishek coronation ceremony and here dashrath is sitting his head you know hand in like this holding his head in his hand and he said what's the problem you know everything was so good and uh, suddenly i see there is a sorrowness in the palace what is the reason he said your mother kai kai you know your step mother she wants you to go to an exile and she wants bharat to be the king ram said i am happy you know i am happy if kai kai is happy i am happy you know i will do it i will do it for her pleasure and bharat is more qualified than me it's a good choice also so i will do voluntarily so these things are happening dashrath you know he he is bound by dharma of speaking the truth and uh, kai kai is there and kai kai goes and he says uh, i will make you ready to go to uh, in exile in the forest so bring she brings her the uh, tea barks as a clothes for uh, ram and uh, ram goes to sita to tell her that i have to leave now the palace and i have to go for the forest to the forest then sita is saying no i am married to you and uh, married to you means i will go wherever you want and then she said no you don't have to no you are not banished only i am banished you are a uh, you know daughter of janaka who was raised in palace you know it's not easy to stay in the forest with all the wild animals no food to eat no place to stay you are not used to these austerities you know at least i was in gurukul i know you know i stayed with vasishta i know we used to go to forest and collect food and we have i know the austerities but you don't know so i will be okay but you will not be okay so please you stay here then sita says you know once you are married said wife should be always with husband you no know, she should not be alone and i will never stay without you and wife's happiness is in the happiness of husband so whatever way her ha- happiness is husband not what husband does her happiness is husband and therefore a wife's duty is to always support whatever religious activity husband is performing so i will come with you whatever your religious activities dharma you are protecting or following i should be there as a sh- as a shadow and i will be with you all the time so ram tried to convince her but she said no i am coming so now lakshmana is also come there so how i can stay without you you know i will not stay without you just imagine lakshman he is also just married with sita and ram you know so he leaves her wife his wife also and he also goes even though he is not also banished so sita and lakshman voluntarily are assisting ram in this you know in his uh, uh, exile so now they go and uh, just in couple days dashrath you know he cannot bear the separation from ram so he leaves his body and then the whole ayodhya within couple days you know it was a such a prosperous city with everybody is so happy now everybody is morose because ram is gone and dashrath has died so the whole city plunged into sorrow and then vashishta who is the kula guru with the guru of all the um, ayodhya vasis so uh, vashishta says now kingdom cannot be without a king so there has to be some king kingdom cannot be without a king there has to be some king so uh, bharat is the next one and it was a dashrath of desire whether it is by uh, his choice or force whatever it is that was his desire so bharat should be immediately summoned 
so he sends uh, Vasishtha Muni, he sends a messenger to uh, Kekaya, where the Bharat and Chaturvena both are staying, his brothers. And uh, when these things are happening, Bharat had very uh, inauspicious dreams. He was seeing so many inauspicious things happening around uh, in his dream. And uh, he was saying something bad happened to Dasharath, but he was seeing all these bad omens. And he got up in a shock. And at that time, the news came that messenger has come. And he want Bharat to immediately come back to Ayodhya. And uh, he said, please, uh, Sister Muni has summoned you immediately. You know, you should start. You should come. Come back to Ayodhya. So, this, you see, this is Vedic culture is so sensitive. If some, even if somebody died, they don't tell that your somebody has died. They say, no, are, you are urgently required. No, don't say why. Right? It's urgently required. I remember when I was a small kid, you know, there was a telegram just came to India at that time. So telegram means you just some sentence and they will charge for you. And to make it short, they made numbers. So like one, two, three, four, five, seven. So one means congratulations, second means best wishes. So seven number was start immediately. <laughs> if somebody remembers uh, my start immediately. So you don't know why. Start immediately. Seven number. You know, just so start immediately. No reason. So because it's a shock already. So now Bharat is in anxiety and uh, he comes to Ayodhya and he sees everything is like uh, just like completely sh it's, nothing is moving, it's all shocked. The trees, the animals and the birds and the people, they're all like so morose, there is no life into them. Then he is looking, comes, comes, comes inside. And then he goes to uh, his mother, Kaikai. And uh, Kaikai is sitting there in the queen's body, very decorated on a Raja Simhasan. You know. So he offers obeisances, he embraces him, he says, Congratulations, Bharat, you are the king of Ayodhya. He said, what? He said, where is my tat? Where is my father? He, said, he just left his body two days ago. No, sorry, seven days ago. It took seven days for uh, Bharat to come to Ayodhya. So he said, last week, Dasharath left his body. And he said, then where is my brother, Ram? He said, he is gone to exile. So who did all these things? He said, I did. I am your mother. I care for you. I love you. I want you to see the, to become a king and I did this for you. Then Bharat gets very angry. He said, you wretched woman, you are not my mother, you are my enemy. I wish you would have dead right at the point when you did all these things. And he starts cursing, you know, his mother. And uh, he said, but I did it for you. He said, no, you didn't do it for me, you did it for you. Then Kaikai starts becoming, you know, a little sober. And that time, uh, Bharat, there are so many curses. And one of the interesting curses, he said, one who is responsible to banish Ram to the forest, he will be addicted with women, wine, meat, and gambling. You get some connection? <laughs> he said, one who has no Ram, who banishes Ram to the forest, he will be addicted to women, wine, uh, that means illicit sex, gambling, uh, meat eating, and uh, intoxication. So this is the curse of Bharata. If you do not have Ram, then you will be addicted to these things in your life. So we banished your Ram from your heart. So uh, now his, all these things are happening here. So then Bharata gets very upset and uh, he said, I will bring Ram. So he takes all the uh, ministers and all the uh, army and he is going. He, then he is on the way. He finds the way that he comes to Guha, who is the first person who met Ram. And Guha tells him, yes, Ram was here. Then why you are following Ram with such a big army? Are you going to kill Ram? Is that your intention? Now see, he, he's suspicious. You know, actually, Bharat's intention is to bring Ram to Ayodhya. But Guha is suspecting. He's going with uh, so many, you know, army and all these things. So he tells his, uh, all the boatmen, you know, so he gives 100 boatmen to protect each boat. He has 500 boats on the bank of the river. He said, go and guard all the boats. That don't, even one person should not cross the river and go to wherever Ram is. You know, because he has come here with ill intention. See, sometimes it happens if you have a good intention, 
but people don't recognize that you have good ill intention and they become suspicious. So Bharat says, no, actually I am doing it. I am going to bring Ram back to Ayodhya. And that is why I am going. Then Goha becomes a little sober. So even if there is suspicion, if someone clears it, it should we should clear out the suspicion. Don't should not keep on thinking the same thing which we were thinking before. So now the uh, Guha then shows them no over here. They were, they were here. They slept. You know, they slept just on the dry leaves. You know, they didn't have any hurt. They didn't build, build anything. They just ate some bare fruits here, and they did here all Sita Ram. They are sleeping uh, on the ground on the dry leaves. And Lakshman was guarding all night, and Bharat was like, really? So he also said that I should also give up all the kingly clothes, and he becomes very simple. Then he said, where did they go from here? Then he said, from here, uh, they went to the ashram of, uh, who is that, uh, Muni? Bharat Muni. Muni. So Bharat Muni, he went to his ashram. So now all the army sitting in the boat and crossing the river, and they came to Bharadwaj Ashram. Now Bharadwaj also is the same thing. He is also suspicious. Why you have come here? Is it, it's, are, you, are you willing to, are you desiring to kill Ram? You know, why you are asking where is he? You know? So he is also suspicious. So he said, no, I have not come to do the kill Ram. Actually, I have come Ram, to bring Ram back to Ayodhya. Then he said, I know that, but I was just testing. Mm -hmm. So uh, he said, then he said, oh, Ram was here. And uh, he is he, all his kingly clothes are here. He just left it here. And he he was wearing uh, all the tree barks. And he matted his ears, you know, with a sticky substance from bunny and tree. He matted his ears, you know. So, and then he, from here he went to Chitrakut. So, he may be on the hill in the Chitrakut now. So, you will find there. Now, Ram is sitting with uh, Sita uh, on the very beautiful. And Chitrakut is very beautiful. Even today it's the same. Mandakini river is there in the hill and beautiful, the stone, stone is there where Sita and Ram were sitting. So we go for Ayodhya and we go for Yatra. Have you been anybody in Chitrakut? Yes. Are you from there? Yeah. At Lakhanau probably. <laughs> yes. It's a beautiful, today the beautiful hills and crystal clear Mandakini. Even last year we went for Yatra in Chitrakut. Crystal clear water even today in Kali Yuga. Now, beautiful place and it's on the hill. So Ram was uh, show, telling Sita, I see Sita, how we are fortunate. We would not have enjoyed this beautiful nature if we were stuck in the palace. So anything comes in your life, you try to find it, enjoyment in it. You know, there is, must be some reason in that, that God is doing with you. So God is thinking that way, it is beautiful now. Even though, so we should be happy whether you are in palace or in forest, mm -hmm. if Ram is with you. That is the most important. That is the most important happiness. So externally, palace or forest doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Ram in a heart is the most important thing. So that even Ram is thinking like that. So what to speak of his devotees. <laughs> so Ram is thinking like that. So he's there. So he's showing, see, this is a beautiful tree. This is called this fruit, that fruit, name of the fruits, trees. He's talking with Sita. And when he turns around, he sees big dust of, you know, all dust is, you know, in the sky, like all the clouds there. And he sees all the animals, he hears all the animals are just, you know, shouting and running around and something big is coming. So it's all like a cloud. So he said, Lakshman, go and see what is happening. You know, why this so much dust is in the cloud? Why all these animals are running away, making, you know, chirping sounds and uh, yelling sounds. You know, just go and see. So Lakshman turns around and goes there and he said, be aware, be aware. Bharat is coming to kill you. Take your bow and arrow. Let's go and kill him before he comes here. Mm -hmm. I said, Ram says, cool, yeah. <laughs> she didn't say, yeah. <laughs> chill out, chill out. <laughs> chill out, chill out, you know. You should not get angry. You should not get angry. You know, you should not, when in anger, you cannot take de good decisions. In, in anger, we lose your intelligence. That is what Bhagavad Gita says. Krodha, Bhagavati, Samoha. In anger, there is always illusion. So therefore, we should not take any good decisions or any decisions when you are in anger. Cool down. And then think. So Lakshman is so agitated, he is so angry. Then uh, he said, he's coming to kill us, coming to kill us. Ram said, how do you know? Mm. How do you know? So this is what, you know, Bharata is, Bharat is trying to do good thing, but everybody is suspicious about him. Everybody is suspicious about him. Even the Bharata, his own brother. So Ram says, at least find out, you know. Then he goes near and he sees the, uh, the flag of Ayodhya. 
and he sees one empty elephant, uh, which was Dasharath. So the elephant with the uh, sitting place on the uh, is there, and Bharat is coming behind it. And then he comes to Ram, he just surrenders in offer of businesses. And he gets up and he hugs him. He said, I have come here. I want you to take you back to Ayodhya. And he said, let's see, Lakshman, you wanted to kill him. He has come here to take me back to Ayodhya. And uh, then he, Ram says, no, I cannot come back to Ayodhya because I have promised my father. And then he said, by the way, how is my father? And Bharat says, he left his word. So Ram also feels the pain. And he just, then they go together to Mandakini River, offer tarpan and all the rituals. And then they come back and they say, now I have my main purpose of coming here, Ram, to take you back. Please come back. And they say, Ram said, no, I have promised Kaikai and I have promised Dashrath, so I cannot come back. So he said, Kaikai is also here, Kaushali is also, Sumitra is also, all three queens are here and they also want you to come back. So there is a place in Chitrakut where we see all the footprints of Kaikai uh, and uh, uh, Sumitra and Ram, Bharat, Ratru, all these is one place in, uh, in in Chitrakut, right below the hill down. So, so they are all meeting there and they are convincing Ram to come back. So Ram said, "No, I cannot." You know. So he said, "At least uh, I will be your representative uh, and give me your shoes, you know, and I will worship them and I will live like what you are living now in forest. I will like the same life what you are living here and more austere than that." Mm -hmm. And he takes his uh, shoes and takes it on his head and just like he uh, honors the shoes as if the as if Ram is coming. Mm -hmm. So then go back to Ayodhya and he keeps the shoes and he worships them and uh, he eats only barley cooked in uh, cooked in cow urine. Yes, cooked in cow urine. And he eats as a uh, gochararuti. What is gochararuti? Means you bend your hands behind and whatever comes in your mouth you eat. That he did for 14 years. Just one food, barley cooked in cow urine. If you eat at least for three days you get tired. <laughs> he did this for 14 years. Even though everything was available for him. He didn't wear any nice clothes. He was wearing the same tea bags as his brother was wearing in the forest. So this is the austerity Bharat did for Ram. Because, and any decision he will take, first he will uh, talk with, I mean, he will worship uh, the feet of uh, Ram, it's Padukas, the sleepers, and then only he will take care of all the management of the kingdom. 14 years he did. Mm -hmm. So finally after the Ram left from there, they went to, uh, you know, Panchavati, their Sita was stolen, then they went again to Sri Lanka, killed the Ram, Ravana, and everybody came back. Now everybody is there. Now Bharat didn't go inside. Bharat didn't go in Ayodhya. He said, I'm not going to go in. I, I cannot see Ayodhya without Ram. So what he did, there is a place called Nandigram. It is there today. So Nandigram, so he stayed in Nandigram, and uh, he, he used to go under the cave, and he used to sleep there. He says that I am not qualified to see up, you know, under the cave he went, he was doing these austerities. And daily, daytime he will come, you know, that uh, cave is also there. So daytime he will come and manage all the affairs, live very simple, although there was no need. You know, he would have stayed, okay, you have got the shoe, we can do, you know, nicely, opulently. He didn't. He was, austerity he was doing. So, when he came back, then again Ram, and he met, and Ram again became the king. Now this is what Ramayana, so how it uh, belongs to us, what does it mean to our life, you know, what does it, how we should look into this, it is not just this story, but it happens with us even today. So, this mantra, you know, Kaikai is a uh, soul and mantra is a mind. Man means mind and thara means churning. So mantra, whose mind is always churning, his mind is like mantra. He is not fixed, you know, his thoughts are always changing and that's why he is always disturbed. He is also always disturbed. So this mantra, so our mind convinces the soul, if you keep Ram, then you will not be enjoy sense gratification. You will not be, mind cannot do anything, you know. 
I will not get anything. So that is why you should kick the Ram out. You, know, you should kick the Ram out. If Ram is there, there is no sense gratification. In Sanskrit or Hindi, they say, if there is calm, there is no Ram. If there is Ram, there is no calm. So calm is a lust. Lust means not only sex, enjoying mentality. People think lust means just husband and wife enjoying. No. Lust is anything you think about I am the enjoyer. That's lust. So, so this mind is telling to soul that kick out Ram from you know, your heart. Otherwise you won't be able to enjoy. Then I said, no, this is his house. I said, how can I do that? Then mind tell, gives you excuses. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And that is what we do in condition stage. We listen to our mind. And therefore, every there is a justification, yes, whatever do, because we are listening to mind. And mind gives you all the ways to stay away from Ram. Mind will never tell you. As soon as you say Ram, you said no, no Ram. You know, it is okay. You can come after 14 years. Not now. And that 14 years never ends. Right? <laughs> so we have to be very intelligent. So this mantra, which is our disturbing mind, creating so many desires, one after another, one after another, one after another. So therefore, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, and also it is said that Manayeva Manushanam Bandhanam Moksha uh, Bandhanam uh, Manaya Manushanam. Bandhana, no, what is moksha, bandha mokshaya? Manayo manushanam, bandha mokshaya. So the point is, the mind is the cause of bandha, means bounding. Mokshaya, freedom. So you, your mind is bound when you have so many desires to enjoy. Your mind becomes bounded. You know, it controls you. And uh, mokshaya, but that mind, if it is properly controlled, it gives you freedom from all the bondage. And that's what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Uddhareed Atman Atmanam Na Atmanam Avasadeed. So, Atmai Vai Atmane Bandhu Atvai Rupur Atmana. So, the Atma here, Prabhupada explains, is your friend and the same mind is your enemy. So, if you tell what mind to do, then it's your friend. If you listen to your mind, he's your enemy. So, how you will become mind? You have to tell mind what to do. And most of the people, most of the people listen to mind what mind wants to do. And therefore, they are always disturbed, always in stress and never happy. So this, this is the cause of mantra. Now, what is the solution? Mantra sees outside. She sees what is happening inside. And the same mantra, that mind, if you engage with the help of mantra, then mind looks inside. That mantra makes all the material desire disappear and brings you back to Krishna. So the same mind, if you let her become like a mantra, it's destruction. If mantra, that means bringing back to close. So this mantra is like a Bharat. is like bringing back Ram into our life. So we have to choose who you want to associate with. Most of the world is filled with mantra. People, those who are acting like whatever their mind says. Mm -hmm. And only very few people you will find, like in Iskhan Columbus temple, those who are at least trying to understand what mind, what I should tell the mind. No, nobody is perfect. You know, mind is very difficult. Krishna says impossible to control. So even if we have some conditioning, some difficulties, uh, some bad qualities, but at least we know we should not listen to mind. People don't even know that. People think that, wow. You know, whatever you actually that's the education given to do whatever you want. No, that means you are letting mind to like fire your life, you know. That's why. So uh, it is not do whatever you want. You know, you tell mind what you want. And how do I know? How do I tell the mind what to want? The scripture helps us. What we cannot see, scripture sees. What dangers we don't know in our life, scripture tells us these are the dangers coming in. Don't listen to your mind. And this mind is bringing you to face all those dangers. So that mind is your enemy, you know. So don't listen to the mind. Now people say listen to the mind. Most of the Bhagavad Gita after soul, there are slokas after mind only. Bhagavad Gita is trying to convince you that you are not this body, you are soul. Then mind comes there. And that's why Krishna analytically explains 
What is this body situated? Indriyani paranya hor, indriyobya paramana, manasastu para buddhir, buddhiryo para sastu sa. Krishna is saying beyond these blunt senses. Now blunt means dead. So this body is a dead body actually. It's a dead body. And if you see any dead body, what is there? You can see the body which was talking, everything is there. So why it is dead now? So this body is dead. So who is running this body? Krishna says, you know, Indriyani Paranavur, Indriyabhya Param Mana. That mind runs this body. Mind runs this body. Then Manasastu Para Buddhir, how the mind runs according to intelligence. So intelligence is superior to mind. Right? Then Parasastu Sa, beyond intelligence, there is you situated, Arjuna. So you are stronger than intelligence and mind. So you tell intelligence what to do and you get it done from the mind. Body is just an instrument. So, because we do not have this inner knowledge, we are satisfied with outer knowledge. So, inner knowledge you will get only if you take help of mantra. Because mind will be, uh, you know, he will be seeing inside. Now it is taking help of mantra and seeing outside. Our benefits, which are really meant for our destruction. So, mantra means freeing, you know, manastrayate iti mantra. So, man, mind, freeing the mind, that is why it's called mantra. So, how your mind can be free? Only if you are engaging him in superior engagement. And that is chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, that is how sadhus, sadhu means one who has controlled his mind. Sadhu doesn't mean that you have saffron clothes, shaved head, no. Sadhu means one who has controlled his mind. And therefore we come to mandir. Means where it is taught how to control the mind. That is why it is mandir. And what is there in mandir? There is a lord of our heart. So you try to worship him, engage in his chant in his name. And you become like Bharat. You know, do little austerity. So that because you have sent Ram to the forest. So there is a little bit of austerity you have to do. You don't need to eat food cooked in cow urine. You eat nice prasad. You know, Prabhupada is so kind, you know. He would have told, you know, Ram did, Bharat did, did to get Ram, you have to do that. You know, he said, no, that's okay. He said, Bharat, Prabhupada said, you eat nice feast. But understand, Chandra Krishna, that is the most important. Bring back Ram, Krishna into your heart. So the Ramayan, or the appearance of Ram, real Ram Nomi will celebrate if Ram comes to your heart, otherwise it's just a ritual. So let's try to bring that Ram to our heart and just kick out this mantra and see also afterwards, see also become insisted Ayodhya too. Ram is kind. No, let her say in Ayodhya as long as Rama is ruling. So mantra can be there, but rule her according to Ram. So mind should be there, it is there. So we should treat, teach our mind how to act not learn from mind how to act. So, I stop here. Hare Krishna. Shilpapad ki. Any questions? Anybody have? I don't know during the time. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. I'm in love and Prabhu. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. So you quoted this verse that's at the end of the third uh, chapter of Bhagavad Gita that uh, beyond uh, that greater than the senses is the mind, greater than the mind is the intelligence, greater than the intelligence is you yourself, the soul. In uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, in uh, third canto, uh, chapter 26, Lord Kapiladev explains how the... Uh, the material energies evolve uh, originally from Pradhan, and he says that that intelligence, that first the mind comes from ego in the mode of goodness, and then intelligence comes from ego in the mode of passion. So uh, it has uh, long uh, puzzled me that, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that the intelligence is superior to the mind, but then here in <coughs> In that chapter, uh, Lord Kapila Dev is explaining that that actually the mind is uh, the the substance of the mind is naturally in the mode of goodness, and the substance of the intelligence is naturally in the mode of passion. See, one thing can be seen from many angles. So, Bhagavad Gita is saying from inside. 
Kapil Dev is talking from outside. So it's the same thing, both people are talking, but in a different context, correct? So this, uh, see the most important thing is, everything comes from Krishna. They are all details, you know, Kapil Dev is explaining to Devahuti, which is the explanation of Sankhya Vika in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavatam, many places, Bhagavad Gita verses are explained in detail. So these are one of the verses, you know, Sankhya Yoga, Sankhya Darshan. So in there, this explanation is given, all the, how the body is formed, so, and all the sources of all that come. So, but here Krishna is giving only mind intelligence. He is not saying where they have come. You understood? So Kapil Dev is making them clear, you know, how they come, how they appeared, how we come. That's all, you know. It's one sentence, Krishna explains in one Bhagavad Gita, how we come. How that happens, how you get a different body, how creation created. That is explained by Maitreya to be Dura, you know, all these things in Bhagavatam. So Bhagavatam gives you the ex, uh, exclusive explanation of the short quotes by Bhagavad Gita. Minister. And then there are some, some stories to prove them, how it, that has happened. So what Kapil Dev is talking, they are all details. What Krishna is telling you, Arjuna, there is no time. There is a war now, I will give you short. Correct? So this is a just simple explanation beyond this, beyond this, beyond this, beyond this. And then in Bhagavatam, if you want to study more, you go there and see how it came. But person who is in so much hurry to go to office, you cannot tell him too much, you know. You have to tell him what is important work today, just tell him two hours, so that is what Bhagavad Gita is. So both are true in different contexts. Okay. So the point why Krishna is trying to make is intelligence, you know, beyond intelligence there is you. You control the intelligence and let intelligence control the mind. Doesn't matter where they are in goodness, passion or ignorance. No, doesn't matter. Because soul is not in passion, ignorance or you know, goodness. Soul is Satchidananda. So all these things has to come in one level, that is Samadhi. Samadhi means Atma. According to Atma, the soul is acting. According to the soul, which is Atma, as a devotee, intelligence is acting. And according to intelligence, mind is acting. According to mind, the body is acting. That is Samadhi. Samadhi doesn't mean that you close your eyes and sit. No, Samadhi means body acting on the platform of soul. So even if Mataji goes to Walmart or any grocery store, she is in Samadhi. She is thinking about what sabji I should cook for Krishna. So she is in Samadhi. And person sitting in Himalaya with eyes closed for 100 years, he is not in Samadhi. He is just wasting his time. Till he comes, that he has to come down to Columbus temple and service Krishna. <laughs> okay, because this is the engagement. That is just a negation of mind. So their mind is engaged in serving Krishna. Okay? Hare Krishna. Hare Anything, Prabhuji? Anybody have another comments, question? So how many of you want to become friends with Mantra? Mantra. <laughs> okay, how many want to become friend with Mantra? So one more question. Yes, last, of, last question. All of you had already become friends with Mantra. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for the wonderful class. Can you explain, so Sita said when Ram goes, I have to go because wife has to stay with husband. So why Lakshmana's wife stayed back? Great Krishna. Your class is Lakshman, you know. <laughs> so he, he showed, let see, Sita and Ram, they cannot stay uh, uh, away because son and son cannot be separated. Correct? Right? So that's the position of Sita and Ram. He cannot be separated. That's all, okay. Now Lakshman is acting here as a human being, correct? So he can leave his wife to serve Ram. Hare Krishna wife will not like that, but that's what Lakshman did. <laughs> so he he is not bound. He is like acting like a jiva. Of course, Lakshman is the Adi Guru. You know, to serve Sita Ram, you can leave your wife for 14 years. Hare Krishna. Very hard, right? <laughs> Ram don't do it, but he asks his jodi to do it. <laughs> and also, and also Prabhu, she also did it directly while he was working 24 hours. He day time, he was working night time, he supposed to sleep. So his wife staying at the palace, she slept for his sleep. She was sleeping all the time for Lakshman was serving. So when that says she woke up 14 years later when they came back. Oh, okay. So, so he knows the details. Yeah. He was there in Arita, I was not. Hare <laughs> 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 Krishna.
And Lakshman so, may have told his wife to stay back. So it is the first duty yeah, of the wife. Yeah, is asking why Lakshman told. That was his main question. But it is, it is the first duty of wife is to follow the order of the husband. Yeah. So if she said, you stay yeah, back. Another answer. So you will <laughs> get multiple. There was one other thing. I was, I was in India somewhere. <laughs> I was not in India. So they know the minds of all of them. So they, are, they are realized so. so. Uh, I'm still talking, uh, you know, about everything. Uh, Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, there was six. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Prabhupada Ki. Jai. His grace will know on Prabhupada Ki. Jai.